Okay, so a complex number can usually be defined as having a real part and an imaginary part. Now, something you really need to take note of is that these two numbers cannot be mixed. This is the simplest form that it can be in. These are like apples and oranges. They don't mix. Uh, so, like we used to do, uh, we can sort of represent these two as uh, kind of like coordinates, like, like, like a coordinate system, a Cartesian system. So, like, well, let's say if we had the point 2, 3, you used to be able to represent that as being, this tells us that we need to go 2 up on the x-axis, and this one tells us we need to go 3 up on the y-axis. And so a point 2, 3 can kind of be represented like that, as a point like that. Now what we're going to do with complex numbers though, we're going to represent it on the same kind of, same kind of way, but all we're going to do is change our axes. We're going to change our horizontal axes to being a real one, and our vertical axis, we're changing it to become an imaginary axis. So let's take the example of a complex number like 1 minus 2i. So this tells us we need to go 1 up on the real axis and minus 2 down on the vertical axis. So we take, so that point z1 can be represented by this. If we take another number, say minus 3 and minus 4, we can, we, this tells us we need to go minus 3 on the real axis and minus 4 on the vertical axis. 1, 2, 3, 4. So we get a point about this. So this is our point Z2. Now, with complex numbers, let's say we wanted to add the two. We often do that in you know, many different kinds of... We use it, we just use it all around the place. So, let's say we have Z1 plus Z2. You'll just add these in the normal kind of fashion, you just, but you have to add them separately. You have to take the real part separately, and you have to take the imaginary part separately, like you would do if you had the Cartesian coordinates. So in this case, when you add these two numbers, we get minus 2, when we add these two numbers, we get minus 6. The times are two complex numbers, Z1 and Z2. Now we can't do them like we do with vectors. We have to do it slightly differently. So the way we're going to do it is we're going to take our first, our first complex number, Z1, and then we're going to put it, put it in brackets, and we're going to times it by our second vector, and put that in brackets, and times them like that, kind of like a binomial expansion type thing. So we times these two together, and we get minus 3. We times these two together, and we get minus 4i. And we times these two together, we get plus 6i. Times these two, we get minus 8. And so our final complex number, when you times these two complex number, let's call it z3, will end up being minus 3 minus 8, uh, which is minus 11. And these two, which make plus 2i. So, in other words, z1 times by z2 will equal to minus 11 plus 2i. That's how we times complex numbers. Okay, so I'm going to define a new term here, complex conjugate. Now let's say you have a complex number, say for this one, and you wanted to uh, get rid of its imaginary part. You just wanted to make it completely real. We, the way to do that is you times it by something called a complex conjugate. So we're going to define a complex conjugate with a star on a complex number with a star on top of it. And we're going to say it's a minus i b. So basically, the complex conjugate is just you just take the sign in front of the imaginary part and you flip it and you, you get the complex conjugate. So what does that look like on a graph? So if we show it here, uh, we take zi, its complex conjugate is simply going to be, the real part stays the same, and the imaginary part, the sign of it flips, so we get 2 plus 2i, instead of minus. 
So what this will look like on the graph will be if we go along one and up to, we get this point here, which we can say it's our z star one. And if you see complex conjugate, it's simply, um, it's just a reflection on the x-axis, it's on the horizontal axis. It's just it flipped like that. That's a complex conjugate graph. Now I'm going to prove to you that uh, algebraically that this times like this will always give you a real number. So we take our complex conjugate, our, our normal uh, complex number, and we times it by our complex conjugate. So we get this and this, so a squared plus a b i minus a b i and this thing is plus b squared. So these two will cancel out and we'll be left with a squared plus b squared. Uh, and that shows that this will always be real. There's no i's in this, there's no imaginary part. It's only a real part. So let's take an example. So let's go back to our z Z1 example, where a complex conjugate is 1 plus 2i. So let's times these two numbers together. So Z1 times by Z2, Z1 complex conjugate. So this will be 1 minus 2i times by 1 plus 2i. If we expand this out, we'll get 1 uh, plus 2i minus 2i and plus 4, which gives you 5. So these two will cancel out, and you're just going to get 1 plus 4. Uh, and I'm going to show you proofs here, actually. One interesting thing about the complex conjugate is that uh, if we take our final result, say 5 and we call it z, and we plot it onto the argon diagram. You'll go up five, so one, two, three, four, which is here. <laughs> and uh, this point here can be Z3. Uh, one thing to note about the complex conjugate is it's going to be the square of your original thing. So, modulus, yes, sir. so by modulus, our original original uh, complex number you'll get uh, 1 squared um, plus plus 4 plus 2 squared which will equal to the square root of 5 and we saw that uh, the modulus of our of our product of the form of our, uh, normal our normal complex number and our complex conjugate was equal to 5. So we see here that the, um, the, the product of the complex number and the complex conjugate is simply the square of the magnitude of our original one. I mean, this magnitude is simply, if you times it by itself, you'll get this magnitude.